what made the economy grow, what reduced the bureaucratic burden in our society, and what actually made our communities healthier and cleaner. It's just technology. For you, yes. Thank the gentleman for yielding. And with all due respect to the gentleman from Arizona, he's very weird <laughs> in that he runs his congressional office like a think tank where people contemplate the ways that technology can improve health care and the environment in a nonpartisan way because these are not issues that have anything to do with whether someone is a Republican or a Democrat, but yeah. so many of these ideas that we, the gentleman and I have discussed for years fail to make their way into a, the most dynamic economy and marketplace in the world, which is the United States of America. And so my question for the gentleman is, how do we go from the innovative space of great Americans coming up with sensor technology to action in the Congress or within our government that is, that is worthy of the great people we serve. And I yield back to the gentleman and, and, and thank him for indulging the question. Actually, would the gentleman be willing to enter into a colloquy so we can just go back and forth? I would. Okay. Look, you're, you're one of my buddies from Florida. Um, you actually get this, but you also know I actually love the technology disruptions because none of us have figured out if it's Republican or Democrat yet, which actually makes it possible for us to do it. Now, eventually, we'll break it into partisan because everything has become weaponized and partisan around this body. But right now, think of this. This is a natural gas electric facility. It can power 5,000 homes. It is up and running outside Houston. It doesn't have a smokestack. All the ACO2, so all the carbon, is captured. They actually came up with this brilliant technology that the carbon actually flows through. And I believe, if I, my understanding of the engineering, it helps spin the turbines. And then the excess carbon that's, that's generated is saved and sold. We actually have a tax credit that was, uh, we um, adjusted, uh, hopefully made it more robust as we did tax reform. Um, that if you want to take some of that carbon and put it in concrete, or a piece of plastic, or do it for certain types of oil recovery, those things. Will the gentleman yield for a question? Was sure. it a refundable tax credit? Excuse me? Was it a refundable tax credit, uh, it, or was it, it an upfront a, it, credit? It, it's actually a tax credit uh, uh, according to the amount of tonnage you produce. Uh, so it's a production uh, tax credit. Yeah. And, and, but the beauty of it is that model has said, we've actually already created a value on this carbon and if you don't put it into the environment, but actually use it for other things, as a filler in plastics, as a filler in concrete, in putting it back in the ground to enhance um, recovery, we're already doing it. And this technology isn't utopianism. It exists. It's already running. It's already powered. Well, how many times around here have we talked about that we could actually have a hydrocarbon generation that without a smokestack? The technology exists. We, if we're going to talk about you know, a green agenda, we actually all need to sit down and actually meet with the really smart researchers and scientists and actually understand the math and science that science is way ahead of where our heads are at. And you have some, you know, amazing technologies coming out of your state right now on everything from biogeneration to um, the, the ways to manage the environment. Yeah. Well, and I, I would ask the gentleman, you know, as, as we try to take these good ideas that seem to not be emerging from the federal government, but from the several states, from local communities that are doing some of their own great work, mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I feel at times like you got one party here that thinks that big government's always the answer. You got mm -hmm. another party that thinks that big business is always the answer. And at times, these technological solutions come from neither. They, yeah. come, they come from the creative class, the innovative class. That's actually a brilliant way to phrase it. Brilliant. And look, my continuing thought experiment, and this is a little beyond where we were going, but it makes the point. Um, you know, visit Washington, D.C. or a bunch of other locations now. They're not going to give you a straw. Are they going to give you a paper straw? The math is, and this actually I believe comes from the United Nations, 90% of all the plastic in the ocean. And, and look, it, it's a big deal. Um, at the, I, I'm looking at my data here. Um, roughly 8 million tons a year mm -hmm. plastic goes into the ocean. You're from a coastal state. Comes from 10 rivers. Eight of them in Asia, two of them in Africa. If you actually really cared about plastic in the ocean, that eight million tons, we would actually take our environmental policy, our trade policy, 
our foreign aid policy and say we're going to actually help these 10 rivers that are responsible for 90% of the plastic in the ocean and work on those. But instead we do these feel-good, absurd, theatrical things of my community isn't going to do straws, don't we feel better that we did something for plastic in the ocean? It had nothing to do with plastic in the ocean. It's these 10 rivers. Let's grow up and stop the political theater. And, and so what, what is what is the get out of jail free card so that we can liberate ourselves from a policy making climate that seems to be more robust in virtue signaling than in actually <laughs> following data? I knew you were going to say virtue signaling. Um, look, I, I, this is a little bit sarcastic, and I, and I mean it more to be slightly on the humorous side. Um, uh, one of the first things every member of Congress should put into their budgets is the ownership of a calculator. Because we functionally work in a math-free zone where our feelings become public policy instead of the baseline data where we can actually have an impact making our society and the world healthier, more economically prosperous. And if you actually genuinely cared about plastic in the ocean, we got 10 rivers, 90% of the plastic, we know exactly where they are, focus there instead of the absurdity of the straw at your local Whatever. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate the gentleman mentioning our oceans as someone from a coastal state. That means a great deal to me. Well, and coming from Arizona, we have sort of this utopian view that one day Arizona may become a coastal state. So well, that's... based on the current rate of climate change, uh, you may get your wish. But or an earthquake. It, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't strike me as an enviable outcome. I, but I, I do uh, thank the gentleman again for, for yielding some of his time for this discussion. And it is my sincere hope that this is a discussion that we can have with members of Congress from urban districts, rural districts, districts, liberal members, conservative members, because as the gentleman correctly points out, these are actually solutions that do not lend themselves to a partisan tilt, and I'm sincerely hopeful that the gentleman will continue to lead on the subject. I yield back, and I thank the gentleman. You're very kind. Thank you for the colloquy.